G'day guys, my name's Josh, you can call me Zawoodle, and welcome back to Dookie Dookie Literature Club. I'm back to continue to write the poetry that the girls want to hear. I'm here to make the girls love me, to get in with all the sweet anime girls. Uh, what was Monica's voice going? <laughs> Hi again, Josh. I'm still going. I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to make for I narrate my way through the whole thing because this whole thing is text based. I mean, I've got to do it. Um, glad to see you didn't run away from us. <laughs> ah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your promise, Josh. I hope this isn't too overwhelming for, of a commitment for you. Dude, commitment and me, I've, I, I want to tell you that I'm fine with it, but like deep down, I'm, I, I, commitment's just not something I can handle. I'm freaking out just a little bit on the inside. I have a raging, uh, I'm a raging alcoholic, massive problem with the grog, because I, I can't handle commitments. Um, making you dive headfirst in literature when you're not accustomed to it, oh come on, like he deserves any slack. Oh fuck you Natsuki, you bitch. So you already told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year, and last year too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what, but if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Jesus, you're a fucking psycho, psycho little bitch, aren't you? Christ, I almost called you psychedelic, which would be not far off the truth, because like, all the colours are psychedelic as shit, but like, you're a little monster. Um, Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in a club room. Big mouth, hey? I mean, it's not going to benefit me in any way, but I'm sure someone will likely have a big mouth. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. That's, that's really weird that you say that. <laughs> I was talking about you sucking dick. Whatever. Moving on. Natsuki finds herself stuck between, say, Monica and Manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back down into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Josh always gives it his best as long as he's having fun. He helps me with my busy work without me even asking. Ah, I'm so freaking adorable. Who, who does that? Um, look, cooking, cleaning my room. Wait, I help, I help her clean her room without being asked. I mean, first of all, she shouldn't be asking me to clean her room. But like, second of all, I just go and help her clean her room. I thought I hated the bitch. I thought I was trying to run away from her every day before school, and now I'm going over to her house to help her do her chores. What the shit, Josh? Get your shit together. How dependable I am. Dependable. You can say that again, purple hair. I love you. I, lo I, I love you a long time. Um. <laughs> Sayori, that's because your room is so messy, it's distracting. Are you my sister? Why Why is your room being so distracting that it, it hurts me? What is going on there? I accidentally cooked through something. Is that so? <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, Yuri, I love you. Um, you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. Yes, get jealous. Get jealous of me being in Sayori's room. You can get, you, you can come into my room anytime. Like, my room is clean. Not as, uh, not as messy as Sayori's. My room's nice and clean. It'd be fine. I'm not even embarrassed to bring you in there. Um, how come? You and Josh can become good friends too. Oh man, can we not be in the friend zone? That, that'd be okay. Uh, um, say, say, Sayori. Hmm? Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> That's fucking, why? Why are there so many dot, dot, dots? Why are you hesitating all the time? As usual, Sayori finds, uh, seems oblivious to the weird situation she just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today, you know? Wait, wait Sayori, uh, me? Oh, Jesus Christ, this is just like, whew. Um, not really. Don't be so shy. It's really nothing. What is it? Never, ne never mind. Sayori made me, made it like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Eh, uh, I'm sorry, Yuri. I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue this situation. Well, she looks like super embarrassed. She doesn't have any eyes anymore. She's so embarrassed she no longer has eyes. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. Ah, uh, well done, Josh. You've smoothed it over well. It'll make me happy no matter what. It, is that so? Yeah. Oh, and I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Uh, all right. Well, wait, did her top just open? Is that what she got me? <laughs> I mean, okay, I'm, I'll, I'll accept these presents. Lay the presents on me. Cover my face in your presence. <laughs> anyway. Well, here. Yuri reaches into a bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. Well, I mean, I have a very short, short attention span, so this better be like a picture book and like two pages long. If it's not, then I'm not sure I'll be able to get through it, but I'll, I'll do my best anyway. Uh, if you don't, it's usually read. Um, and we could, you know, oh, <laughs> hey, we could, we, what are we doing, Yuri? What are you suggesting we do? 
discuss it if if you wanted that this is how is this girl accidentally being so cute she even picked out a book she thinks i'll like despite me not reading much yuri thank you i'll definitely read this i enthusiastically take the book Phew. well you can read it at your own pace i look forward to hearing what you think now that everyone's settled in i expected monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club but doesn't seem to be the case so Yori and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she's waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Get out of the closet, Natsuki. God, you spend way too much time there with your little tea set. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. And it looks like the same book she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Oh, the music just changed. Uh, crap. I think she noticed me looking at her. She, she sneaks another glance at me. And our eyes meet for a split second. Dot, dot, dot. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Uh, sorry. I was just spacing out. I, I muttered this, sensing I'd made her uncomfortable. Oh, I, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But that I'm just rereading a bit. So that's the book you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> God. I, I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious how you came to, uh, to have two copies of the same book. It's called a fucking bookstore, Josh. Good God. There's probably a library in this school too. There are, they don't just make one copy of one book ever. There's not, not just one edition of each book. There's many editions, Josh. You can manage to have two books of the same thing. It's fine. It's not that weird. Uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore, you say, bookstores, what did I tell you? Fucking bookstores, it's where you get your books from. I'm so uncultured. Uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, uh, I just happened to buy two of them. <laughs> Tee -hee. Ah, I see. There's something fairly obvious that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. What the shit is the book? Can someone tell me the title of the book just a little bit, please? I'm curious as to what I'm being thrown into here. Uh, I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's what's it about anyway? Well, mm. <laughs> Yuri closes the book and scans her eyes over the back. The book is entitled pa uh, Portrait of Markov. I finally found out the name of the book. Thank God. Portrait of Markov. It's probably going to be important to me at some point. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Oh my God, Illuminati! All right, I just wanted to make sure I didn't accidentally give anything away. Basically, it's about this girl in high school who moves in with her long lost sister. But as soon as she, uh, well, as soon as she does so, her life gets real strange. She gets targeted by these people who escaped from a human experiment prison, and while her life is in danger, she needs to desperately choose who to trust. No matter what she does, she ends up disobeying most of her relationships, and her life starts to fall apart. Uh, that's a, that's a, that's kind of a spoiler, don't you think, Yuri? Fuck. Can you not give away the entire plot and premise of the book before I read it? You only gave it to me 20 minutes ago and you already spoiled half the book for me. God damn it, you hot purple bitch. Um, that's kind of dark, isn't it? You made it sound like it's going to be a nice story. So that dark turn came from nowhere. Is that like an analog for this game? Is that like, is that like hinting at something? It's like, like it's foreshadowing. It's foreshadowing this game. It's like, it's supposed to be all happy and charming. It's going to have a dark twist. I know there's a twist coming. Because like all the reviews are just talking about how this game is fucking like a psychological fuck fest. So I don't know what's going to happen, but something's going to happen. I'm going to keep playing it so something does. <laughs> Yuri gently giggles all of a sudden. Are, are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Josh? No, it's not that. I mean, I could definitely enjoy these kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. No, I didn't. I wrote her a poem based explicitly on her being into these kind of things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that these kinds of stories, they challenge you to look at life in a strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because they have their own goals and their own philosophy that they, be that they believe in. Then suddenly, when you thought you related to the protagonist, they're made out to be this naive one for, for letting their one-sided morals interfere with the vil villain's plans. Yeah, what a dick. How dare the hero save the day from the villain's plans? What an asshole. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Uh, hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well... I guess it's alright then, but I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. Uh, what problem? When I let, when I let things, when I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. 
So, so I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. You've said so many strange things already, Yuri. It's fine. You're still hot. Please stop me if I ever start talking too much. That's my problem too. Oh, we're going to be into such good friends and hopefully more than friends. Can you can you come and teach me more about books in my in my secluded bedroom? That's. I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. Ah, oh, Josh, you're such a smooth talker. I wish I could talk like this in real life. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature, a literature club after all. Ah, uh, that's, well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? You, you don't have to. Ah, what are you saying? Just a moment ago, you said you were looking forward to it. Dot, dot, dot. Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. All right, it's fine if I sit here, yeah? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Oh, I am... Oh, wait, I am making moves. This is going to be great. I'm going, to read my... I'm going to read my book in one hand and slipping my hand into hers in the other hand. Oh, God, this is happening. Whew. Is it getting hot in here or is it just the purple hair? I can't tell. Ah, yeah. I... Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's, it's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Uh, alright. I open a book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not particularly a bad thing. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat com comforting? Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry. I was just... Yuri, you really you apologize a lot, don't you? Is she Canadian? Uh, I do. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> here is the... Here, this should work, right? Oh, wait, that was that was me. I said that in her voice. Damn it! I say this... I, I need, like... I need the, the name tags, like, swap sides between who's saying what at which time. Because otherwise, I just... I'd keep using the same voice, and it's not what I want to do. I slide my desk until it's up against Yuri's, then hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we le- it, Wow, shit. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so I use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, uh, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Oh, oh. Woo! I'm- I'm so close. I can- I, I just I, I can lean up a little bit. Uh, nah, she's got like the whole collar like tied up and things. I can't see anything over here. God, be a- Like, why can't you be in the Australian high school where they're all sluts? <laughs> Yuri takes the left arm and holds the left side of the book between a thumb and a forefinger. That's a very specific way to describe how she's holding a book. That's how most people hold a book, isn't it? Ah, I do the same on my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after she flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It actually is, It's actually kind of distracting me. As if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, she's in the corner of my vision. Oh, we are... We are kicking goals, son. We are moving through this at a million miles an hour. It's the best day ever. But I want to go to more literature clubs. What are there any literature clubs in me I can go to? And if they're full of hot girls like this. Probably not anime girls. Just regular girls. That'd be fine. Uh, are you ready? Uh, to turn the page. Ah, oh, sorry. God, I'm so distracted right now. I think I got a little bit distracted for a second. See, I told you. I glance over at Yuri's face again and her eyes meet. Well, obviously, because she's staring at my own... Like, look at like this. She is just like... Like, I'm staring at me. You're not even reading the goddamn book. So there's no words in there. It's just like, it's just lines. You're not even looking at the book anymore, Yuri. God, make it more subtle, please. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. <laughs> that's that, that's going to be a thought you're going to have to get yourself a lot, Josh. I promise you that. Ah, <sighs> That's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a little bit longer. <laughs> God damn it. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if, I, if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume she's finished the page before me, so I turn it by my own vo uh, volition. We continue to the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. Ooh, woo, it's getting very hot in here. My thumb gentle, uh, gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri, this must be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Ah, oh, Josh. You are smoother than a fucking lip biscuit. <laughs> what the fuck is a lip biscuit? I don't know. For some reason, that came to my head. Um, yeah. You think so? How does she? Well, I guess she's more blunt in a lot of ways. But she also second guesses all of the things she says and does. Like she's afraid she'll do something wrong. It's not like 
uh, it's not like I can see into her, your head or anything, but they kind of, re uh, but they kind of reminiscent of some of the, your mannerisms. I, I see. Oh, oh, we've left the desk. We're back in the, back in the room. You remain silent for a moment. But Josh, that's probably a terrible thing to have in common with her. Ugh, it's so embarrassing that you think that. Wait, 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 wait. Josh, god damn it. You just told a girl she's insecure. You idiot. That's not how you get laid at all. I assume my, my goal here is to get laid. I mean, I, look at her. Of course I want to get laid. I, I didn't mean it in the bad way or anything. Sorry, I really didn't know you were so self-conscious about that sort of thing. Dot, dot, dot. I guess I meant more that's kind of cute. Ah, ha, ha. Oh, that is not how quickly they turn around. You've, you've made her self-conscious, Josh. She's never coming around to you again. What are you saying all of a sudden? I... Okay, everyone. Oh, fuck off, Monica. God damn, we were busy. You fucking go cut, get a haircut for the first time in your life, apparently. In fact, all of you need a goddamn haircut. I think it's about time we share today's poems with each other. We might not have enough time but if we wait too long. Uh, Yuri exhales, spared from finishing her thought. Is that all right, Yuri? You look, like, you look kind of down. I'm sorry if you haven't been looking forward to this. Ah, uh, it's not. It's fine. Yuri releases her hand from the book, causing it to close on top of my thumb. All right. I guess I'll do some more reading tonight. Or would you? Or would you prefer I only read it with you? Oh, Josh. Woof. You're going from like a hundred to zero to hundred to zero so goddamn much. I, I can't tell if you're nailing this or if you're striking out hard. Jeez, so much going on. I guess I don't have too much of a preference either way. Hmm. In that case, I'll read a little more tonight. It'll be more fun to read with you after it picks up a bit, you know? That's good That's good reasoning. In that case, feel free to finish the first two chapters in your own time. God, I've got like homework now. She's giving me homework to read a book for her? God damn. All right. I stand up and I make the mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back in my bag. Dude, get a bookmark. You're never going to remember where you were. You're going to forget that page in a heartbeat. You're never going to get back to where you were. By the way, did you remember to write the poem last night? Uh, yeah. My relaxation ends. I, can, I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Ah, oh, Sayori, you bitch, go away. You pop up for two seconds and I hate you. Oh, Sayori and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. I'm glad they're pulling out their poems. This could be really awkward. Sayori's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. It's really specific. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers on a, co uh, on a composition notebook. Uh, I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. That Suki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well. Reaching into their bags, I do the same myself. Oh, here we go. Poem time. Poem time. Who should I show my poem to first? Yuri. Yuri, come at me. I want to sit with Yuri. Yuri seems the most experienced. Woo. I hope so. I mean, I'm not saying anything, but like, I'm, I'm apparently useless at this. So I need someone with experience to guide me through, if you know what I mean. Um, so I start with her. I can trust her opinion, to be fair. Oh, hey, gorgeous. How you doing? Dot, dot, dot. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Hey, what was that? Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> dot, 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 dot. Question mark. What? All right. All right. Um, did, did you say that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, but then ends up covering her whole face. Oh, how embarrassing. With a like, like little scratch mark covering her eyes again. You are going a, a, a tomato, like a cherry tomato shade of red. I, uh... He's going to ha He's going to- is, What? Is she thinking? Can I read her mind now? He's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Huh? That's- I- I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? Ha 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 ha. Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicates you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time. Really? It's just my first day. <laughs> huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Dot, dot, dot. Well, I know that. I just meant that, um, Yuri trails off, and I would have found an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. You just... Uh, it's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers, and having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think that the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is they try to make their style very deliberate. Then most deliberate is deliberately trying to get inside you. <laughs> Shit, I missed that one. Go back. I was too busy being smutty. Uh, in other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit two together. Okay, thank you for, thank you for clearing it up. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. 
Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone. She sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something that you can be blamed for. There are so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example, trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. That Suki can be a little biased though, because that Suki's a whore! Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. But don't just fucking like lead me on like that and give me nothing. God damn it, Yuri. I shouldn't be talking about other people like that. Nah, give me the gossip. Talk some smack. Start some rumors. I, I love it. I want to hear you talk shit about people. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri is apologizing to herself or me or Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. Oh, I'd, I'd love to share your, my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily as if there's a rare opportunity for her, which in itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be the literature club? Oh, oh, poem. Here we go. Oh, God. Whew, I'm excited. Ghost under the light. Oh wait, no, I need to I need to do it like this, don't I? I need to get like my, my my like whole soothing sexy voice going. Not that I have one, but I'll try. Ghost under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street light from we stood the test of time. The last gets to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air as if present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. Dot dot dot. I'm I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. It was actually pretty hard to read that shit, I'm not gonna lie. I was struggling through that, limping through it. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you such a long time to read. Uh well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Ah, Josh. As pretty as you are, am I right? Ha ha ha. Eh? That's a relief. Also uh, I also I like the poem. Even though it's short, it's very descriptive. It wasn't sh it wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Hugh Hugh Haha. <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. Actually, this story isn't about a ghost at all, Josh. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember, the poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than, si to, than to tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is being symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in a last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn, putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Eh? It's nothing, really. Yours is impressive too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, I was really nervous about doing all this, but in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Josh. Oh, oh Yuri, you are talking your way, and your purple hair is making its way into my heart. You're a special one. I like you. I'm glad I chose you over the other one. That took you some whore. You're pretty, and the other ones, I don't remember anything about them because I was focused on you too much. But anyway, you're the best. Me too. Who should I show my poem to next? Uh, let's go. Let's just work our way up the list. Monica, the class president. Hi, Josh. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we could do better, I'm always listening. I've, I've just, I, I've, my voice for all of the girls is exactly the same. There is no like, discrepancy between my voice, like for for Yuri or Monica and Natsuki or the other one whose name I've forgotten. I'm always listening. Don't be too afraid to bring things up, okay? All right, I'll keep that in mind. Of course, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better just going with the flow until I'm more settled. Anyway. Want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Josh. God, I sound like a, one of the guys in White Chicks this is like when they're putting on their, like, the fake blonde girl accent. Oh, it's just like, it's that squeaky girl tone. I can't do it very well. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I heard, uh, I hand Monica my poem. Hmm, great job, Josh. I was going, ooh, in my head while reading it. It's really, it's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. Damn right you did. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. Oh, oh, it's, it's, Josh is a man after my own heart. If you don't oversell yourself, then you can't disappoint anyone. Keep your expectations low. 
That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. That's <laughs> pretty rare for me to put in effort though, let's be honest. <laughs> That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Yeah, damn straight she does. I wrote it, I wrote it just for her. The whole thing was based just to make her like me more. Writings that full of imag uh, imagery, uh, imagery, imagery and symbolism. Unlike Sayori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to derive their own meaning out of it. It's uh, uh, it's very challenging to write like that effectively, both laying people to get something out of it just by feel, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuances. It takes years of practice, which I'm assuring Yuri has at this point. I never really asked though. I'm sure I'm somewhere near her. I'm sure I'm nowhere near her level yet. Not somewhere near. God, don't don't get ahead of yourself there, Joshy boy. Don't worry so much. Uh, so don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn to trying new things. I'm trying. To, I'll end up. Wait. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. Yeah, you will, Joshy boy. It could take a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased towards their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write in the way that everyone else wants you to write. If it's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. <laughs> there was actual dialogue that was just us laughing at each other. What the shit? Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's a long one. Good God, I have to like scroll for this one. Hole in the wall. It couldn't have been me. See, the direction the spackle protrudes. A noisy neighbor, an angry boyfriend. I'll never know if I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind, like a film left out in the sun. It's not too late. My retinas already scorched for the permanent copy of the meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep, stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. You have no idea how hard it was to get through that, talking about a little hole and being burnt in the eyes. <laughs> how deep that little hole went. You have no idea how hard it was for me to get through that without making some shitty joke. I'm proud of myself for getting through there. So, what did you think? Hmm, it's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Aha, uh -huh, it's okay. What kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays? That is, a lot of poems have been uh, putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When I performed out loud, it could be really powerful. So you basically wrote a song. Then I guess a song is a poem just like more, with more timing. Like what she's talking about. All right, that makes more sense then. What was that inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure how to how to put it. I guess you could say that I some kind of uh, that I had some kind of epiphany recently, and I it's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. <laughs> Monica's writing tip of the day. All right. Sometimes, when you're writing a poem, or a story, your brain gets too fix fixated on a specific point. If you try too hard to make it perfect, you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper, and tidy up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. Well, it's real metaphorical there, Monica. It's just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Does that mean that I need to stop focusing my, my poems so much on, um, on Yuri? Um, I, th I think it might. I think she's. I think she's making a point that that's what I need to do. And um, I have been recording for a, a long time now. This is gonna be like another half hour episode. This episode's going for like half an hour because it's just, it's just plowing through the dialogue. I just keep going and going and going. And um, it gets. Uh, I mean, it gets a little hard to, to keep them to short episodes. I like making like fifty minute to twenty minute episodes. But these are going longer because I think they have to. The whole story has to be there for this kind of game. I think. So I'm going to have to come back and read my poem. Well, not read my poem. Have Natsuki and Sayori read my poems in the next episode because this episode is done. So thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, make sure you hit the like button down below and subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter, but don't talk to you there first. I'll see you in the next episode. Have a good one. <laughs>